Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome to Overanalyze Adventures and welcome to this. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, you read that title correct. This is Plain History, The Slave Trade, a surprisingly happy-go-lucky game about the horrors of human slavery. And yes, that is the intro music. That's not shenanigans on my part. I suppose I could give the developer the benefit of the doubt here and think, hey, maybe they chose this music because, well, it's the music they used in the previous games. And also, you kind of want to ease kids into this very serious subject. But at the same time, it just feels a little bit inappropriate. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, we are in for a treat here. I clearly remember the day I got torn away from my home and brought to the coastline in chains. Wow, I didn't realize that people looked so much like knockoff Legos back in the day. And speaking of day, what year is it supposed to be? You know, for an edutainment title about history, you think things like dates would be important. But as far as I can tell, this edutainment title never specifies what year or even century it's taking place in. Because little things like that really shouldn't matter in a game that's trying to teach you a little bit about history. The journey over the big ocean, the terrors on board. It was pure luck I survived. And let's not go into any detail about the horrors of the transatlantic crossing because this is a game for ages 12 and under. And it was also my luck I got acquired by the captain. Now the game doesn't seem like it's very interested in telling you why this is a good thing because you know why would an edgy demon title want to teach you anything? Since the game won't tell you I guess I'll have to. Basically I think it's trying to say that being a slave to a ship captain is a better proposition than being a slave on a Caribbean sugar plantation and being worked to death. He shipped me to his home, England, where I now serve as his slave. Soon we'll depart on our next journey, away from rainy England to the distant shores I once called my home. So this slave boy sounds like a 40 year old man, but then again this whole story could be some sort of flashback or something that's not really all that clear, at least not early on. Anyway, as you can imagine, this is a wacky cartoony looking world filled with slavery and fun facts for kids to learn. Tim, stop walking around like a headless horse crab. Mr. Blotherbloom and I have just signed our contract. Soon we're going to get slaves for the Caribbean markets. Yeah, that's right, we have a Mr. Blotherboom, human trafficker, slaver. <laughs> oh my god. I think I need to, yup, oh, how that beer get in my hand? Go get us that golden bottle of brandy on the counter, so Mr. Blotherbloom and I can seal the deal with a drink. An old slaver Ahab over here, his mouth keeps moving even long after the audio has stopped playing. So anywho, how do you think you should ease kids in to learn about slavery? Why? By first learning about brandy! Yeah, not kidding, I'm beginning to find the educational value of this game to be a tiny bit dubious. And who wrote these little factoids? I mean, come on, brandy's just old wine that sits around until someone decides it's a good idea to drink it? Really? I think for a game about slavery, I would expect a little bit more nuance and maybe a touch more facts than just... Well, what is even that? Oh boy, this is not a good sign, is it? Did you get the brandy? Ah, very good. Sometimes I think we'll get a decent person out of you yet. Well, that's a little racist, Mr. Slaver Man. So anyway, as you can expect, this is a video game, so our protagonist has to go do some quests for his master. Sure enough, it's go down to the dock because this dumbass here lost his goddamn pipe, and I guess the developer can't make a move because, you know, animation's difficult, so... Our hero has to do it. Click the point counter to see what hides behind it. Oh yeah, we get this terrifying effeminate mouse that just randomly talks to you throughout the game and tells you what to do and all that. I don't know if any of the other characters can see it because they don't ever seem to acknowledge it, but our hero sure can see it. And in fact, it's given our hero a grade. Right now, he at the wood level. He a peasant, which I guess being a peasant's better than a slave, so I guess we're already kind of winning. So nevertheless, we have to go down to the docks because otherwise, yeah, dumbass Captain Slaveham over here won't go do the slaving thing without getting his nick fix. So we go down to the docks and hey, look, there's a lovely wooden stereotype of a dirty Scotsman here. Or I'm just reading too much into this game. Yeah. Either way, as you can imagine, he has the pipe. Cause, why not? He's nasty and he just picks up things off the ground and shoves it in his mouth like he's a five-year-old. Yeah, I just picked it up. But I don't bother with pipes. Real adventurers chew on red-hot embers. 
Now that's something that makes you feel cool. And apparently it's also something that makes your mouth stop moving even though we can still hear you talking. It's a magic trick, folks. Whoa. It's actually pretty damn easy to get the pipe back. Basically, you gotta tell him about what you're doing. You're gonna go on a slave trip and he's all excited about it because I guess going on slave trade trips is all the rage nowadays. So yeah, he just gives you the pipe and you can go about your day. What, this game's not hard or anything. It's designed for children's ages 12 and under. It's edutainment, not challenge-tainment. Here's the pipe. Naturally, we get an exciting little factoid about tobacco. So, so far, we've learned about brandy, we've learned about tobacco, and we've just learned that this boy's a slave. That's it. Whew. Boy, the educational merit of this title is just... It's God-smacking me. On another note, Mr. Brotherbloom wants to talk to you. He wants to make sure you're loyal to us. If Mr. Brotherbloom trusts you, we'll get ready to leave for Africa. So this is a weird component in the game that really seems completely unnecessary and kind of dumb. Basically, you need to make sure that your trust meter doesn't go down too far. Otherwise, your slavers will enslave you harder. That's pretty much it. So you just gotta say the right things to them and then it goes up and then they trust you more. Which, you know, isn't really all that valuable except for one tiny section of the game. But hey, it's here to add some gameplay to this edutainment nonsense. Anyway, if you're wondering why these slavers give a rat's ass about this boy's loyalty, it's because they need him as an interpreter so they can buy more slaves. Which seems of dubious historical validity to me, but whatever, I'm not the maker of an edutainment title. I'm just a guy with a history minor. Now you see, I'm by far not an expert on the transatlantic slave trade, but I'm pretty sure by this point in history, they had some pretty well-established slave trade ports where you go in, buy slaves, they speak Portuguese, Spanish, English, and the like. But then again, I could be off base here so maybe you do need a 10 year old that speaks a native language so you can buy slaves just from some random coast ah well the 1700s were a wacky time at least that's what i think this is all right let's meet a ragtag group of slavers oh hey one of them's a doctor and he looks like well, the dude from the Quaker Oatmeal stuff. And naturally, he needs our help. And he's also supposed to be the nice guy. Because he asked this slave his name, his, you know, real name, not his Christian name. So, that's nice. The Oatmeal dude's not a total bigot. Actually, I'll have you know that the Quakers were heavily involved in the abolition of slavery in the United States. And, and hey, you don't care, do you? But what you should care about is that old Quaker Oats over here needs to find his magnifying glass. And I guess, well, we have to do it because, you, know, you know, them wet boys, they can't move it too difficult for him. Oh, hey, we found the magnifying glass, and it gives us a fun fact about magnifying glasses. Why they were first made in Greece. That's pretty cool. Oh, and they make things larger. God damn. If you're too stupid to know how a magnifying glass works and what it does, then you're probably too stupid to understand slavery. I'm just saying. Who the hell is the audience for this game? So naturally, Mr. Instant Oatmeal is elated that we found the magnifying glass right next to the barrel that he could probably see from where he's standing. Hello, footage. Did you find my magnifying glass? Oh, very good. With my magnifying glass back and my bags on board the ship, I'm ready to go. All right, you know what that means, class? That means we now get to get slaves. Yay! We're a little slave boy that didn't sabotage his operation to enslave more people and make their lives miserable for a small minority of people to receive goods that aren't really necessary but make huge profits. Yay, us! We're good! And we get a fun mini game. I kid you not. Yeah. Oh my god, it's terrible. Who the hell made it? You're bad. That's bad slavery, but lord, you're bad at making games. So yeah, we play the mini game and that's how you travel, because that's exactly how, you know, ships worked back then. With really shit mini games. Hi, Pootage. Welcome to Africa. Come talk to me. I've got something for you. God damn, there's something that makes me uneasy about that rap thing. He, she, it. Just, just don't seem right. But anywho, what it has for us is these things called chrono goggles that lets us interact with things that are out of time. Even though we can see them, we can't interact with them though without the glasses on because audio works through our eyeballs now. So after talking to the mouse and getting the goggles, we get to talk to old Captain Slavery over here, and he ends up telling us to go see the chief. And he doesn't mention anything about the cool steampunk goggles that are now adorning our cranium, because I assume he's a dumbass. This is a trading post where Europeans and Africans meet and deal with slaves. 
Now, it's kind of weird how the mouse just barges in from time to time to inform us about things we should already know. But then again, maybe the mouse is for the slow kids. So anywho, here's one of the few moments in this game you get to use the chrono goggles, and that's on this rather classical looking white lady here. She's a Roman slave that was transported back in time for some peculiar reason. And now... She wants to go back in time because, you know, eh, being a Roman slave's not that terrible, I guess. So yeah, we gotta help her, and it's a silly side quest, to be honest with you. And if you do help her, she gives you some money, and then she just kind of goes up to heaven or something. What the hell type of message is this game sending? So with a bag of mint condition ancient Roman coins in hand, you think our hero would try to buy his freedom or something? Well, those things gotta be worth some money. But now instead, let's go ahead and meet the chief. <laughs> Yeah, they just kind of all spit in the place when you walk in. It's not exactly the best animation, but anyway, we get to use the chrono goggles again on the AK that's just here, out of time. Okay, no one seems to know some mysterious magical weapon that's just hanging out next to the king. Can they not see it? So anyway, after you use your goggles on it, you get a fun-filled minigame that explains something about slavery. Now, it's already been established that this game is not confident that the people playing it know what a magnifying glass is, but all these images and all these complicated metaphors and allegories that appear to be something that a freshman poli-sci major would create and post on their Facebook page, you expect them to get it. It's weird. It's like, yeah, find the different color shorts on this guy, and also find the piles of money that are a metaphor for, I assume, wage slavery over literal physical slavery. It's just weird. Then we got old Ben Franklin in the corner with a spear and then he has an AK and there's like a radio and a newspaper what the hell are they get in that anywho our hero sets up things with the chief because everyone trusts a 10 year old to do business with and then he discovers a little bit of plot Hootage? brother I thought you were dead I thought I'd never see you again when they dragged you from the village. So the same person, I'm assuming she's a lady, who does the voice of the mouse, also does the voice of our hero's sister. Okay. So anyway, this poor boy's sister, she a slave, or about to be a slave. Well, she's in a seasoning camp right now, but either way, things aren't looking good for her. So we have to figure out a way to help her out. And you know how we do that, folks? Why well, we get her some items so she can play a rip-roaring, exciting mini-game. Yeah! Great work, big brother! I didn't raise my hopes in vain. Tonight, I will pluck the flower and bear it as a symbol of hope. Oh yeah, we totally picked that flower. Oh yeah. It sounds like this is a clone of that one weird game, The Irritating Stick. Nah, man. This is deep about slavery and flowers and hope. Great. The flower is the symbol of hope. Catch a good night's sleep on the palm leaves. You've earned it. So considering this is an educational title, I have to take it for its word that it's being factual now. So any old flower is a symbol of hope. I did not know that. So woohoo, let's just go cut to the chase and buy some slaves as a 10 year old. Because again, the amount of trust these dumbass white people are putting in this 10 year old is staggering. I pity the fool who messes with Chief Janto. Well, that's just kind of dumb. I mean, a real antiquated reference there to game developers. Do you think anyone under 20 is going to know that's supposed to be Mr. T? So yeah, let's just go haggle for slaves, because that's what 10-year-olds did back in the day. And of course, you can muck it up if you want, and the outcome doesn't really matter. Whatever happens, happens. It's an edutainment title. It's here to educate you, I guess, with old references. Okay, sure, whatever. So after that's all said and done, you talk to your sister, and then you get a play. Well, let me just show you. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the most bizarre scenes I have ever seen in a video game. What the hell is going on with this scene? Let's just soak it in. For starters, it's Tetris with slaves, which is pretty fucked up. And then you have like a happy smiling dragon in the background who's like, Yeah, go stack humans on top of one another. It's awesome. And the little mouse has got like a little admiral hat on. And it's smiling. And it's all giddy. And it's like, yeah, do your best to make sure you get as many people in here so they all suffer greatly. Yeah, it's so fun and educational. And holy shit. Honestly, this seems like something that the god 
damn KKK would make. What the hell? What are you thinking, game developers? Did you now look at this and think, hmm, okay, this might be a little tasteless. Just, just a hair tasteless. Now, I know they use this minigame in that whole Black Death thing, but that no excuse. This is just, just, it's dumb as hell. Slave traders didn't look upon slaves as people, but as a product. They therefore staked the slaves on top of each other to get as many as possible shipped. This was certainly not nice. Oh, oh, okay, I guess this statement makes up for everything. I do apologize, game. It was brilliant of you to make this be a complicated metaphor for how slavers didn't see slaves as people. I apologize. I just, I just thought you were making a really shitty Tetris clone and you were really dumb sorry so let's just play your stupid mini game where we take our ship to the caribbean but oh wait there's a problem oh no turns out there's stuff going on <laughs> may my gods protect me my only hope is that they'll treat us with some respect before they eat us so all right this is the game's best effort at depicting the horrors of the transatlantic slave trade although our heroine can freely walk around but yeah everyone else is kind of close to how it was like it was pretty fucking miserable but you know this game's not gonna go into it with too much detail except well when the ship starts running out of food then things get actually kind of interesting that storm's nothing compared to the one i braved when visiting the edge of the world in my paper boat now those were the waves. Yeah, yeah, you see it's lines like this is why I cut out so much dialogue in this game. Because it's friggin' terrible and we can spend all day just going over what the hell this man just said. Paper boats, edge of the world. What the hell, man? We're running short on provisions, I tell you. And no adventurer can fight on an empty stomach. Beauties and beasts. Nothing like a good storm to keep you on your tippy toes. Now, back to serious business. We're gonna have to throw some slaves overboard. Correct. Turned into fish food. Clam collectors, you know. The cook says we need to lose between 20 and 50 slaves. Wallace thinks we're gonna run out of food before we reach Barbados. So we better lose some slaves to prevent starvation. Talk to the doctor. And together with him, you should make a list of the slaves you don't think will make it anyway. Better to get rid of them now than later. Well, that's actually kind of heavy right there. And, well, kind of bizarre too. Why would they leave the little slave boy to make these decisions? But hey, whatever. It's downright educational if you ask me. Because you see, there's no way to win this situation. Someone is going to get thrown overboard. It's just up to you to decide how few you can make it. I mean, there's no winner here. It's just trying to make the best of a terrible situation. And well, as far as anything this game's done, this is downright the most educational, I would say. That's good news. These fishing stories drive me madder than a wacky wave. But he does know how to steer a boat. Let's lose 10 less slaves. So yeah, the best I could do was get it down to five slaves. So anyway, we end up at our final destination. Quite literally for a lot of these people. Oh yeah, his, his steampunk goggles, they all messed up now. Why? Ah, hell if I know. I'm so glad we both made it across the sea. We must find out quickly how much time we have before the next market where I might be bought by a white slaver. Anyway, as you can imagine, we gotta figure out a way to free our sister. And no, 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 we can't use the sister scene we got earlier. That's just, I don't know, that's just there. As you can imagine, you have to do some mild puzzling. You just basically talk to everyone. And then eventually, the plan reveals itself. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, basically all you have to do is tell all the adults to go to bed. And then this drunk guy, you have to make him turn around. And then you steal the keys. The universal set of keys that frees all the slaves. And since all the adults are asleep or drunk, well, let the good times roll. Oh, coming to keep me? Since it seems you have your apps. Since it's... What is it? I can't see anything. Yeah, his goggles are still messed up. They never get better. I guess that's what you get for carrying around a time-distorting device on your head. Did you get the keys? Great job, Put. 
So yeah, but before we can actually run away, we gotta blow up the fort. Cause you know, why not? We can do it. It's not really a distraction, we're just gonna straight up murder all the people here. What the fuck? Are these people like mummies or zombies? Why they run so weird? Oh damn, we killed everyone. It looks like they didn't flee the explosion in time. I mean, I'm serious, look at this. They all dead now. Well, I guess that's better than a life of slavery. Kind of a melancholy ending. But no, of course that's not how the game ends. <laughs> it's an edutainment title. These are end with a happy ending. We escaped into the jungle together with many other slaves while the white men were struggling to put out the fire. We were free and together again. How it went us from there, what battles we fought for our freedom, you must hear about some other time. As in never, because likely some slave hunters tried to hunt down these children as they tried to flee into the mountains and, well, you know how that goes. Or maybe not. Maybe they found a village somewhere up in the high mountain ranges that were all of ex-slaves or something. Yeah, I mean, again, the time period here, it's not really clear when this is. Maybe they're talking about the Haitian Revolution or something? I don't fucking know. Huh. Oh well, so on that note, so ends this over-analysis of this really terrible edutainment title. Did you learn anything? God knows I didn't learn anything. Except the people who made this game. What the hell were you thinking with that Tetris game? And everything else. Good lord. Why make a child's game about slavery if you're not going to be willing to really engage the issue in any deep and meaningful way? I mean, come on. What the hell are you supposed to learn from this shit? Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.